this is really the first time I ever do a talk in English and it's uh, an honor for me to do it in a bookstore like this. It's the first time in England in, and in London. So, um, yeah, we don't know how this will end. But um, <laughs> anyway, at 7 o'clock or something like that. Um, and, but this reminds me, 10 years or 12 years ago, when we started with the first book, uh, and it was called Successful Wishing, so this, the Desire Code. And it was a narrow place like this, and only a few people, friends and people we know very well, we were close with. Uh, and it was the same situation like this. It was a start, and we didn't know where does this travel go. But within weeks, the book was published, the book was a bestseller, and it was translated in 11 languages and uh, published in 21 different countries. And a movement began. It was really amazing, and we were totally astonished what happened to the book, to us, and to everything. And um, I started to give seminars, weekend seminars, suddenly, out of the blue. I'd never done this before. And it was a great success, and we didn't know why. And then we started to talk, to do talks, and I did a huge a tour through Germany, and were on stage of thousands of people suddenly, and it started with 10, 15 people like this today. So, um, we always have starting points. Maybe this is a starting point for us too, here in England. So, uh, th really, thank you for coming, because for us it's, um, not only a, an opportunity, it's a miracle thing, maybe, which was always an, um, an author. Uh, I was an actor, and I was a very famous actor, actually, very well known in Germany. I shot over 350 movies. I started with six years and made this 30 years, or 35 years. So um, I was on stage, I think, over 2,000 times on huge theaters, and I directed movies, so I was in the film business. And, um, of course, I had everything you need to be happy. You need, I was accepted, I had money, I had women, I uh, ran over red carpets. Uh, it was really um, hilarious. It was a great time. And uh, I was... Uh, um, on the newspaper, on the front page of the newspapers, and smiled. And people saw me, this guy must be happy, he's so smiling. But the truth is, I wasn't happy. I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't missing something. So, right in the absolutely up the hill, somewhere where people began to fly, I'm asking myself, what am I missing? I have everything you need to be happy. So I asked my colleagues and asked them and I asked uh, producer and directors I know, tell me what's going on. I have everything I gained for 30 years, now I have it, and I'm not fulfilled, not satisfied. What's wrong? So they told me, oh, that's easy, you have to shoot more movies. <laughs> Another one said, oh, that's easy, more women, you, get, you, you need to get laid. So all these kind of stuff. So, uh, you, you need more prizes or some, or you, you know, I was invited to every main event, event at the best places. Oh yeah, you need to go to, so it was always more, you need more and more and more. And it doesn't feel right because what went wrong? I had everything, 30 years, now I had everything and I need still more. So I thought about it and I said, maybe maybe it's not not the truth so I did a very radical thing I locked myself in I rented a flat in Berlin and this time um, I lived in Munich and I left Munich because I wanted to do that not in my own city so I rent a flat in in Berlin for four months and locked myself in and just wanted to find out answers for two questions one question one was um, which is my way to happiness? And the other was, how can I live a beautiful relationship? So that was the two things I wanted to know. So I locked myself in, I put the TV out and the stereo out, and uh, I did this in, an, in another uh, city. Otherwise, at home, people were knocking or ringing, or are you crazy, come out. So um, 
and I started to think. And uh, as most of you know, when you start to think, uh, it happens a lot, but not what you expose, what you expect. So I started to think, okay, how will I get happy? What is, what is my way? And suddenly, in the first three days, there was a highway through my brain running with, with thoughts. Uh, and I thought about, oh, well, what, what about, I, I need to go to the dentist, and what idiot I am sitting here, what the party is going on there, and what will my friends say, uh, and so on. So, and after three days, I got calmer. And it was nice. Why not? It was nice. So, I decided, okay, I cut off the electricity and only candles. So, four days, five days, and calmer and calmer, and the, you know, the highway of the thoughts were, were just now uh, only a small road, and suddenly I have uh, signs, stop signs, or uh, like um, a red light, and I can send these thoughts, I don't need away to another person, let him think this, not me. So, and after a week, uh, ten days, it was really amazing. Suddenly, I felt something like, wow, it's great. And for the first time, I really felt myself. It was wonderful. So after 14 days, three weeks, suddenly something changed. I was, something was coming home. And for the first time, I really felt something like happiness, calmness. Uh, wow, that's great what is going on here. And after six weeks, seven weeks, two months, it was really amazing because suddenly there came answers. I don't know from where, but it came. It just came. You would say I, I, I was meditating. But at these times I didn't know anything about meditation. You know, I was a man. I was a man of success, so I was thinking strictly. So, But all these things, I thought how it would work, doesn't work anymore. Just things came in. And I started to write down every word and every line. And um, after 10 weeks, I felt suddenly something like connected. But connected to what? To the universe maybe, to the, my inner self or my unconsciousness, I don't know. But I felt totally con con connected and totally guided. I felt I was not alone, although I was totally alone there. And I felt uh, I'm connected to everybody. And after three months, suddenly a crazy thing happened. I was totally in love. In love with me. I was in love with the surroundings. I was in love with the books and everything I saw. I was uh, in love with the tea I made myself. And uh, I never experienced this before. And after four months, I wasn't anymore in love. You know, in love is being enthusiastic and wow. I, I was just something I would say now, just love. I loved everything. It was a huge road, very calm and very easy. I was guided. Everything was fine. Everything was fine and everything was good. And after four months, in this highly spiritual situation I was going back to the real world after four months speaking to nobody just to myself so and you know of course what will happen after four months in totally quietness just you and all the answers fulfilled and feeling wow welcome to the world you see suddenly what's going on here what are the people doing they're rushing and hurrying have you ever watched people what they're doing they're running and chatting and shouting and they have so many things to do, so important things to do. And uh, I ju was just wondering, have you ever watched people or listened to people when they meet, when they talk to each other? Well, they tell them stories, she did and he did and I was so amazed. And after two hours they get separated from each other and they didn't know nothing from each other. They heard just stories and how dare he, how could he? So and then. Wow! But you know, I was full of love and I loved this too, I loved everything. So, then there was another starting point. I was at an event, huge event in Hamburg, 
I was invited in a huge round table. I was sitting there, and the people were dancing Polynesian. I don't know, do you say in English Polynesian too? Mm -hmm. So when you, yeah, so da 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 da. So this, and I was dancing. I went, oh, and a very famous guy came to me, sat beside me, and said, Pierre, yeah, you have something. I wanna have this too. Yeah, what? I don't know. This makes you happy, and I wanna have to have that. So we talked for an hour, and suddenly, after this hour, he got answers, and he went away, and he know which are the next steps for him. And I was wondering too, because I never realized, well, there's something inside me, just from talking to him, change something with him. So, um, you know how things are going? Within a short time, people came to me, within weeks more and more people came to me just to talk to me. And within some months people came, flight from Hamburg, Berlin, Hanover, Cologne to Munich just to talk to me. And we did this now every Sunday. So they came on Sunday, famous people and unknown people. When you're full of love, it doesn't matter if you're famous or not, you're really a precious person so they came to me we talked four hours they flew back and they were enlightened because they know now what to do and I was more than in heaven because suddenly I realized there's something inside me which helps people whatever it is I do nothing I'm just sitting there talk with people ask them the questions maybe the right questions but they find their answers, I don't give them answers. They find their own answers. And it was really amazing. So we did this for several years, always on Sunday. And they came and I got more and more sure about what I'm doing. And a good friend of mine, a publisher, Conrad, saw this and recognized this for a long period. And he said to me, Pierre, why don't you write a book about that? And I said, come on. So I hesitated two years because, you know, talking to people is one thing. You see the reaction and it's full of life. But writing a book, all the words and wisdom in words and letter, and you don't know who will read this and in what kind of mood will he read this. So um, I hesitated two years. And after two years, maybe you can say by a coincidence or I don't know, or faith, Suddenly, I met the publisher, Conrad, again in a huge stadium in Munich. Amongst 60,000 people, suddenly we were standing face to face. And out of the blue, I said to him, okay, I wrote the book, I will write the book. So, okay, the next day, I, get, I go to Michaela and ask Michaela, well, Michaela, uh, was that right? Shall I really write the book? Because so many books are all already written about these themes. You know, we have Murphy, we have Toller, we have uh, uh, Stuart Wilde, we have um, um, Babel Moore. Uh, the world isn't waiting for my book. Come on. And Michaela said, Pierre, well, that's very easy. People who will buy your book and read your book has need this form of energy you can give them. They, you, they need this field of resonance. So, when you write the book, you just find these people who can only understand your form. So, okay. So I wrote the book, and as we told before, within weeks it was on the bestseller lists. Within weeks I was invited to all the famous TV stations and suddenly there was not anymore the actor who was talking about my next film is and yeah I was so brilliant on this stage so I talked about things I thought which are really important who are you who I am and what is us really making happy so and within a short time the book really got so successful that I wrote a second one, a third one, and now it's 21 books I've written. And I felt like coming home. From the first moment on, I started to write. I forgot time, 
Even when Michaela comes and gives me something to drink or to eat, I forgot the time. It doesn't matter. And <clears throat> I'm so overwhelmed by writing and so overwhelmed when we do the seminars. So this is for me, finally I came home. I found myself. So um, before that time when I was a actor, it was fun. But now I found the meaning of my life. And this is a thing which I can't really explain. You have to experience it. Maybe some of you experience it already. But to come back, what is the starting point? What was the starting point? Is the starting point today because maybe we're going into another market? Was the starting point when I stopped acting? Or was uh, everybody said, are you crazy? You can't stop acting. You're so famous. You get so much money. You will no, earn no money. And you know all the authors. So it tells you with a book, you never can live from a book. Never ever. So you will drive taxi. So um, you need a very strong family, a good family, who uh, support you to say you can live from the book. If it's your heart and you feel it, do it. So thank you, Michaela, anyway. Wait, wait, I don't know. Ah, she left. Ah, she's here. Yeah, I have, uh, uh, okay, so so thank you, Michaela. Anyway, because uh, without her, uh, maybe I wouldn't have written a word. Because you need a family who supports you and says it doesn't matter if you earn money with that or not. Your heart goes with that. You have to do that. You supposed to do that. So finally, um, so what is the starting point? We all have starting points. What's the starting point when I? was bored from being acting, was the starting point when I got locked in or when suddenly all the answer came to me and I wrote it down and uh, was the starting point when I decided okay from now on I will live only after these rules I have written down. So, oh by the way, um, the desire code have rules, this wasn't my idea rules but uh, when I started to be on stage and talk to people uh, they started to write, okay, let, uh, yeah, okay, so um, what's the first step? Uh, first step, okay, start with, um, with, with small things, uh, with the smallest thing, not with huge things. What is easy for you? You can start right now. Okay, uh, what's the second, second step? Well, a second you can do... No, 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 no. So people need rules. Tell me, first, second, third, please. Um, of course, when we change our lives, we um, are on unsure land. You, you don't feel very sure. So you need something, uh, you, need, you need someone who gives you a hand and guides you through all um, the, the things you really don't know. So I learned from all the people uh, who listened to me, they wanted rules. Give me one step, second, third, and that's true. Uh, when I learn a new thing, I buy a, a book for dummies, because there's written first, second, third, and I know ah, Photoshop is going that way. So um, that's true. And it's the same. If when we are um, going with our life and changing our lives, it's like Photoshopping a new life, like filming a new life. It's almost the same. It all starts here in the brain. You visualize something, yeah, you make your affirmation, and so on and so on, and suddenly things are changing. The only thing is to have to record it precisely, so and to write it down, and follow the rules, and be thankful to everybody who support you. So, um, anyway, maybe this is a start. But we, uh, what I will say, we all have starting points in our lives. Sometimes we don't recognize it that it's one. Uh, so book is not printed now in English. Um, what? Not yet. Okay, not yet printed in English. Um, but I have um, some stories. Um, in the book, I'm uh, very much stories. Of course, there are the keys, the rules, the steps. Um, it's seven steps. I don't tell you, otherwise, you won't buy the book. Um, <laughs> no, I can tell you, of course. Um, but what I like most are the stories and in this book are only stories from ourselves what we experienced with successful wishing in German the book is called successful wishing or wishing successful so um, if you have questions I can answer them otherwise I would like to read a story 
Yeah, all right, okay. Um, uh, the first story is uh, the impossible is carried out immediately. Um, and it's about the doubt. You always have doubts. And you know, as you know, doubt is the same as a wish. Of course, because you had, it has emotion, it has pictures, you can visualize it, and we give so much power in the doubts. And we doubt always. So, and this is a story um, where I doubted at first too, because it was almost impossible that this could happen. So, uh, when we were working in Munich on the final cut of our film, and that's just the beginning, we felt so at home that we absolutely wanted to move back to Munich. The weather was beautiful, the people were friendly, and all our friends were there again. Munich was simply our home. But immediately thousands of limiting beliefs popped up, arguing why this definitely couldn't work. Okay, here are the points. It's not that easy to return to our native town because our daughter Julia is attending an international school in Bonn. Second, it would be impossible to enroll her at school in Munich as all the English language schools are totally overcrowded. The waiting lists at these schools run to several years. Of course we could wish, but reality dictates that our wish would take some time to manifest. Of course we all know this, it takes time. And there are only two days left before the summer holidays. The school offices are probably all empty by now. The class lists for the next school year have of course been drawn up long ago. There's no place not for us, for nobody anywhere in the whole world. This year is a no-go the next year either. At that point, we realized that we had fallen into our own trap of limiting beliefs. In other words, we were busy creating our own failure. We changed course immediately and started wishing the proper way. After all, successful wishing had already become more or less second nature to us. But the wish did not strike us as realistic. Why not? Our minds were at it again, having crept in through the back door with all their doubts. Why didn't we just go for it and let things take their course? And strangely enough, no sooner had we formulated a scent and sent the wish than I felt then I felt a persistent urge to phone one of the best international schools in Munich. Michaela smiles, of course, it was utter nonsense, set my mind. Of course the manifestation of this wish was a sheer impossibility. Of course there was no way this could work out. However, after sending out a wish, Michaela always listens very attentively to the subtler energies. Less than two minutes later, she had acted on my impulse and found the school management. The incredible miracle started to take shape. She was told that there was indeed still a place available in the second year group. Another pupil had just been withdrawn two minutes before the phone call and we were invited to visit the next day, the last day of the school year. We were warned not to entertain too high hopes, though as a lengthy ad admission proce procedure was normally required. So the next day we found ourselves, to our amazement, in the headmistress's office. On the way there, we had encountered the parents of a child who, for whom there was no place. In tears, they told us that this meant they would be moving back to England. All in all, it was clear to us that not, notwithstanding the mistress's cordiality, our application would be rejected too, like thousands of others each year. Yet we had wished, and the wish had led us here, right into the office of the headmistress, while by some miracle still had one place to offer. The only place in the whole school, and into the bargain, this place was in the second year group in which Julia belonged. The headmistress spoke at length with Julia and gave her several tests. They conversed in English, and then, after an hour, the miracle became reality. The headmistress nodded approvingly at us and entered Julia in the list of the new pupils. If 
ever anything had been truly impossible, it was this. Securing a place at this school within one day. For years afterwards, other parents confirmed to us the sheer incomprehensibility of this miracle. And in this book are several stories about um, things which happened to that. And I can tell you another story uh, of Julia. Um, I just tell it you because it's so amazing. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it shows you that I'm still very often full of doubt because we are full of doubt. Okay, uh, Julia uh, was in this school and um, of course this school was in English. So for her it was for sure, okay, I will study in the USA. Hmm, okay, in the USA, okay, it was a really unknown, not very famous school, and you, the USA will wait for you, okay. So what we have to do one year before she go to the USA, we have um, to make a tour, a university tour. So you visit all the great universities, uh, Julia decided to go, okay. Also Yale, Harvard, come on, uh, Stanford, yes, yeah, clear, Brown, come on, please, give me Columbia, and so on, all the Ivy Leagues. And uh, so we were there, it was fine, really, it's astonishing, uh, the universities were brilliant. And, um, but after a week, after all these universities, we always heard the same stories. Here we'll only study the best of the best from the whole world. Okay, Julia, you? Mm -hmm. Here we'll only study people who are really willing to get famous. So, and we have a long list of tests and so on. So, I remember the day at Brown. Brown is the third best university in the USA. I got mad. I got angry. I said, come on, please, let us be realistic. What are we doing here? Come on, guys. This is Ivy League and we are from Munich. This is, I don't know, but so. And um, I said, Julia will never get a chance to get in a school like this. And Julia came to me face to face at Brown and said, oh, Papa, yes. Why don't you read your own books? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I like the university. I like Brown. This is my university. Next year, I'm going to this university. And I've had the, I thought, oh my God, what had, have I done? <laughs> oh my God, I wrote all these books, and Julia is now somewhere uh, in heaven, and she will never come back to earth. She will. I don't know. So, um, I didn't say anything, um, but a, ha a year later, when all the tests and all the admissions were sent away, there's one huge day when all the university at the same time publish uh, in the internet you know, uh, where, uh, which students they're taken. So, um, it was 10 o'clock at night in Munich, and the first university sent um, the lists out. So. We saw um, Northeastern, wow, Boston, oh, that's good. So finally she jumped away. We saw suddenly Tufts would take her. Tufts, well, that's a great university. And Julia said, yeah, that's good, but uh, no, that's not good enough. So one o'clock in the night, we heard just only the printer. Bzz, 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 bzz. Julia came down the stairs with a piece of paper, and on it was brown. We congratulate you, you are invited to be the student. And I was just sitting there like right now, I get all these goosebumps. It's the goosebumps? Goosebumps. Goosebumps, yeah. So and she was right. Everything is here. All the boundaries are here. We think it's impossible to go there. It's impossible. And like Henry Ford said, said you, were, you are always right. If you think you can do it, you're right. If you think you can't do it, you're right too. And so I learned a lot that you're very often in doubt. Can you read another story how you found the house? 
uh, and I was uh, in doubt. You know, finally, I have Michaela, who kicked me in the ass. But uh, I was full of doubts too. Um, if, if you want you to hear the next story, well, okay. Um, wishing for the ideal house is a thing. Um, okay, um, we were planning to move from Bonn to Munich, of course. Um, we had only a small office in Munich. Uh, Michaela, being of a very sunny disposition, you've seen her before, absolutely wanted to find a wonderful home near my office so, so that I wouldn't have to struggle through the, com through the traffic every day. Okay, in fact, she even went a step further. She was convinced that we would be able to rent a beautiful little house at most three minutes on foot from my office. I was also convinced at that, at that time. And so we submitted our wish. But no matter where we inquired, we met with disbelieving headshakes. The real estate agents we had commissioned soon made it clear to us that we would certainly not find anything within a year, not in this area. They already had clients living in hotels simply because there was nothing being offered around here. There was no response to our classified ads in the newspaper. The more intensively we sought, the more impossible the fulfillment of our wish seemed to become. Four weeks before our planned move to Munich, the moving company started to get nervous. They wanted to know where they were supposed to take our furniture. So did I, actually. They had to arrange things like parking permits and claim parking space for the van, but our wished for house was still nowhere inside. Quite the contrary. It was clear to me that this wasn't going to work out. We had pushed our luck too far. And then the doubts started stirring inside me. More than once I considered renting storage space for our furniture. I was convinced that this time things would go wrong. But Michaela? remained unshakable in her faith. The house will come to us, we wished for it, so why should we have doubts? Of course, she was right, of course, but this time the situation was getting rather serious. What if the universe's notion of time differed from ours, or the universe had just received a vast number of wishes and was processing them in order of the date of received? Uh, was our account manager perhaps busy with entirely different things, more important things than our modest wish for a house in the near my office? And what were we to say to the moving people? We have just submitted a wish to the universe <laughs> for a new house and the universe always delivers in due time. They wouldn't thought we had gone completely mad. To be honest, there were moments when I did indeed consider Michaela a bit, um, well, shall we say, stubborn. But our marriage was more important to me than the probability of ending up on the street without our furniture. Actually, the thought of sitting on the sofa between parked cars and drinking coffee was quite amusing. But what would we do if it started to rain? <laughs> Every day I became more nervous. Above all, because Michaela, in her boundless innate faith, had dismissed all the stage agents who did not share her belief in a successful outcome, which was all of them. Her attitude was, why should she surround herself with energies that counteracted her wish? So, shortly before we were due to move, we had no house and no one looking for a house on our behalf. Thank you for that. So far, I had been good at successful wishing, but now we had quite clearly come up against our limits. Not as far as Michaela was concerned, though. The deadline was drawing closer and closer. Eventually, Michaela would have to face the truth. And the ugly truth was so obvious. This time, the prompt delivery hadn't worked out. Our furniture would be dumped on the street. However, Michaela refused to face the truth. She saw no reason to doubt. On the contrary, she encouraged me not to give further room to my own doubts and to confidently hold to the, mean, to the manifestation of our wish. And then, 
the miracle actually happened. It began quiet, silent in a pharmacy. The pharmacist recognized us. Many years ago, she had sold us a, a, pregnant, a pregnancy test and two hours later, a second one, because the first one hadn't produced a clear result and I had got on Michaela's nerve until she asked the pharmacist for advice. Was the color line on the test strip red or was it blue? She still remembered and this occasion very well. Well, we struck up a conversation and suddenly she told us that an old friend of hers was moving away and planning to rent his house. Well, here just around the corner. Less than 10 minutes later, we phoned the owner of the house and set up an appointment to view it the next day. But of course, we couldn't wait any longer. That afternoon, we sneaked around the house and viewed it from the outside. We liked it. It was our house. It felt like our house. But the viewing appointment the next day was for all the other prospective tenants as well. Why should we be the ones who get this house? Perhaps because we wished for it and it's now being delivered, smiled Michaela, in her faith. And then the second miracle happened. As we were slowly walking away from the house, an old lady came along and tried to open the garden gate, but it stuck. Although we were a distance away, she called to us and asked us to help her. We opened not only the garden gate for her, but also the front door, and when we said that we would be coming to view the house the next day, she offered to show us around straight away. We thus got a private guided tour of our house. The house was precisely what we were looking for. We were thrilled in our minds. We already saw how we would allocate the rooms and which pieces of furniture we would put where. But we weren't there yet. The elderly lady didn't want to make a decision in advance, but there was a mutual sympathy between us and she wanted to phone to her son, who would take care of the arrangements. And we heard the phone, hello, yeah, yeah, a yeah, couple, and they're yeah, so beautiful, so nice, and so simple. You have to give the house to them. Yeah, of course, I yeah, know more tomorrow, come and pick, okay, but they will come first, tomorrow. Okay, so, the next day, we met the whole family before the other prospective tenants arrived. It was a wonderful afternoon and it was clear to everyone that we would get the house. Although others offered more money, presumably backed by an income more steady than ours, a short time later we held the tenancy agreement in our hands. A miracle? Coincidence? Or the delivery of our wish? And we can tell you many, many stories. Uh, we won a car, I needed money, we won a car, a Jaguar, so that I can, I can write the desire code. Julia, uh, Michaela won a car, so the fullest book of these stories and a funny thing happened because, you know, the book is 10 years now, the first time it was released, and a funny thing happened. I read this right now, of course, again. And I was in the same mood as I was there. And I felt suddenly empowered again. Well, why working so hard? Why not wish? <laughs> OK, you want to come? Come, tell. Yeah, no, yeah, you're we're just getting here. over 500 emails per day from people from our readers. And they are telling us amazing stories, stories you just better than in any film, uh, Hollywood film. It's really uh, astonishing. People who haven't seen their brothers or sisters for 25 years, they go into a public library, they pick randomly a book, there falls out a postcard, and there is the name of the sister, um, Godfather, and who then. It? who borrowed it, yeah. and then they had the address of the godfather of the sister where she was living. So that is, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps all the time, so it's, it's really wonderful. And, and it's, it's playful, it's easy, it's, it's from the heart, you know, why don't we just be like children again? 
it's it's so you know it's it's really simple but it's not easy to to believe in anymore because the world outside is so complicated and things are getting even more com complicated and you know we had this desire for t uh, before we came here two years ago we said okay our daughter she will stay in the u.s and we are we're empty nesters, what shall we do? And um, there is a life, <laughs> we can have a life now. Um, and then we thought, wow, London would be wonderful to live. And we always wanted to live abroad. And then everybody said, in the city, in Central, Seven Dials, are you crazy? Two bedroom, yeah, two yeah, bathroom? We, we like to in Seven Dials, that, well, that, that's a nice place You to never live. will yeah, live yeah. there, <laughs> never, never. It's like literally three days later, we got our flat and it's just around the corner. So, um, it is, sometimes we doubt as well, of course we doubt, and we think, oh no, and, and we, 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 cons we don't consider it work, we work 18 hours per day, but we love what we do, so we don't consider it working, and uh, sometimes I say, oh, a nice coffee would be great, or I want to meet this person, I want, like, you know, in every day, it's, you can, you can just do it. Just ask and, and you get it. And our bigger things like Paul, our dear, dear friend now uh, with whom we couldn't, without whom we couldn't make uh, the desire code. And uh, yeah, I, I coached you and somehow you got inspired and now he's going to Rio at the Olympics. So I mean, this is amazing, you know, as a journalist. So things happen, miracles happen. You just have to believe that miracles are in for you as well, not for the others all the time. They are for everybody. And uh, yeah, we're living proof. <laughs> they have the pictures, yeah, yeah visualize. You yeah, dream your yeah, love, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's creative. And you know, what the, the great thing right now is that um, um, the neuroscience, they knew so many things now, how thinking works, how wishes or praying works. So we know so many things about that, that we can understand, even man can understand, oh, if it works this way, I can do it. Because, Not only you know, women. Yeah, no, women, no, women are more emotional, they do it, they do it just, they, they, oh, that feels good, I do it. But man wants, and they need... Uh, um, they need the rules, they need yeah, the paragraphs, yeah, they, and they need so to... So what will happen? Will yeah. I survive after that? And so on. So, but when they know how, uh, what will happen when you put the light on, and they understand it, they keep to that, and they see mm. that is the easiest way to, to. Yeah. 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 You can finish your sentence. No, no. Sometimes so. it's <laughs> quite good to not to finish a sentence. So, um, we are talking a lot about wishes, and uh, a wish is what the heart tells you to do. So this is why we named this book in English version the Desire Code, because you are what your deepest desires are. So this, this is what drives you, this is the meaning of your life. Your desire brings you on your path, on your way, and, and, and in the end there where you are fulfilled. And um, so the desire, code, uh, the desire Code, Seven Keys to Fulfill Your Wishes for Success, Wealth and Happiness. And um, they are easy to read and we would love you to support us on Kickstarter because this is our first book being self-published. And. See? And yeah, now you have to read it. <laughs> yeah.